Okay, we're gonna look at, take a look at chapter 8.5, compound growth. And what we're gonna take a look at is how do we see how much something is gonna grow over a certain time when we have a compounded interest uh, going on. So just like every other compound interest problem, every other simple interest problem, we're taking a look at a present value here and it's going to have continuous growth to a future value. We know that we get interest on interest, so in a simple interest problem, we had growth that was completely linear from one to the other. When we look at a compound interest problem, we're getting interest on interest, so it's going to start off the same for the very first term. But after that, we're going to get a little bit better because we're getting interest on interest. And over time, we're getting exponential growth. So we're going to get a bunch more interest with compound interest than we did with simple interest. So compound growth is basically how do we take, determining what a future value is based on a present value when there is growth and nothing else. So we take a look at saying, so we'll do page 313, number six. And it says, investors are choice between rates of 5.4% compounded quarterly and 5.5% compounded annually for a six year GIC. Which should we choose? Well, we have two options. And basically we're just gonna calculate the difference. So I don't know what the value is, but we're gonna say, if we invest one dollar or a thousand dollars or any value that we want we'll choose one dollar and over six years we have a choice of either 5.4 percent or 5.5 percent the 5.4%, this is compounded quarterly. And the 5.5% is compounded annually. So we have two options. Well, first of all, our present value is going to be a dollar. Let's make that a negative one dollar because we're doing an investment. And then we're gonna to have to change everything else. So our i per y, well, first of all our i, we'll do the 5.4% first. This is 5.4% over four times per year. It's our nominal rate over number of compoundings. So 5.4 divided by four 1.35, I'm gonna store that straight into I. This is 1.35, 1.35% quarterly or for each quarter. So put this 1.35. Our N is then number of years times compoundings per year, 24. So six times four, 24 compoundings per year going into N. Our negative one, present value, and we're going to compute a future value to be 1.3796534. Because we're only using dollar, I want to have a lot of decimal places. If we compare that to our other rate, well our i for our other rate is 5.5% once per year. So that's equal to 5.5. So we have a separate problem that says, yeah, and our present value is going to be negative 1 because that's our $1 investment. Our i per y is going to be 5.5. And our n now is going to be 6 years once per year. That's 6. I'm going to compute the future value to be. Well, 6n, 5.5i, compute the future value, 
eight eight four two eight. So we're going to compare one point three seven eight eight. Compare one point three seven nine six. One point three seven nine six is greater. This has more com compound growth. So choose. 5.4% quarterly, quarter, quarterly, spelling it wrong, because it has more compound growth. If you're interested in using the formulas for this, we have pretty much the same thing, but we're going to use different val or we're going to use the, the different modes in the calculator. Our future values are present value one plus i to the n. This is equal to well, our present value is one times one plus. Do the first one first. Point zero one three five to the twenty four. So this is one, one plus point zero one three. Again, one plus point zero one three five. The exponent twenty four. Again, gives us exactly the same values what we had before. One point three seven nine six five. And our future value two is equal to our present value 1 plus i to the n, which is 1 times 1 plus point zero five five to the 6, 1 plus point zero five five to the exponent 6, 1.3788. Is doing exactly the same thing as the other calculator modes.